What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Conversion Stack. Today, I have two guests. We have Steven Mandala, Senior Engagement Manager at Next Health, and Amber Nish, VP of Business Development here at OM. And we are chatting, navigating DSO, vendor selection, and the digital transformation in online patient booking. Really fun dynamic. We have, as you heard, Steven on the vendor on the technology vendor side, Amber with her background on the DSO side and me as the agency side. So it's going to be really fun how we all come together to drive innovation in healthcare. So let's dive in and don't forget to like, subscribe and follow us on all your favorite platforms, whether it's YouTube, Spotify, Apple's podcast will be there. So let's dive in. How's it going team? Welcome to the conversion stack. This is actually our first guest episode. Um, so I'm really excited about that. We have Steven Mandala, Senior Engagement Manager at Next Health, and Amber Nish, VP of Business Development here at OM. Um, and today's topic is going to be fun. It's twofold. We're chatting navigating DSO vendor selection and driving the digital transformation in patient scheduling and patient booking when it comes to healthcare and DSOs. Um, so before we hop in, how about we do some quick introductions. Steven, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Happy to be here. Thank you very much. Steven Mindala, um, Senior Engagement Manager here at Next Health. Um, I have, uh, live in the Salt Lake City, Utah area. I've been here about six years um, and I've been with the dental industry um, as a vendor probably about eight years now. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's kind of gives you, I, was, I started my my trek into uh, dental back at Workfront uh, Adobe, um, Adobe company, and and uh, kind of loved the industry and loved uh, being a part of that world, and uh, and uh, so uh, have moved from from through that uh, in the last eight years. So yeah, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Nice, I love that. I love that. I'm a bit newer to the dental industry, so I'm just I'm just starting to dig my uh, my claws into it. Um, what about yourself, Amber? Hey, hey, so I um, am, like Daniel said, I'm actually with OM now as the VP of Business Development, excited to bring this amazing product to other DSOs because as my former role, I was the Chief Marketing Officer at Community Dental Partners, uh, spent my marketing career there with them, kind of grew up in the trenches with CDP as they grew from about eight locations when I started to about 75 when I left. and was able to find and create great relationships with actually both Next Health and OM, which is what we're going to talk about in this podcast today. And so I'm excited to kind of have this conversation and share some of the great things that we did together at CDP in hopes of helping other uh, DSO industry leaders find similar partnerships, relationships to help meet their business goals as well. Nice. I love it. I love it. I think what's really interesting is when you were CMO, at CDP, um, you were responsible for vendor selection, both on the OM side and the Next Health side. So I think there's going to be a fun dynamic here, how we can kind of tackle this from software vendor to service provider vendor to decision maker at, at, at the core organization. And I think that should uh, make for a fun discussion. Um, cool. So let's hop in. Um, we're going to talk about vendor selection and we know how important vendor selection is to success and reducing time waste and capital waste of, of making poor decisions around vendor selection. Um, so Amber, to really get us going, help define what a vendor is from a DSO point of view and, and really introduce the importance of vendor selection. Yeah, it's actually super critical, especially now as we think about every DSO is looking for profitability and efficiencies. As the world has gotten more expensive, the need to outsource. And so I consider a vendor any outsource service system or product that supports a DSO leader in scaling a clinician's vision for their DSO, right? So a DSO's sole purpose is to support a clinical leader and a clinical visionary. And so a vendor is a person that is chosen or a group, a system, a product, um, a service to come in and support the DSO in supporting their clinical team. And so it particularly, again, like I said, in this time of intense outsourcing and efficiency, vendor selection and the ability to interview, hire and maintain strong vendor relationships has never been more 
critical I think that it is right now. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, give me some help elaborate on what happens when vendor selection goes wrong. Well, I can first of all tell you when vendor selection goes wrong, um, you have very unhappy leaders, right? So there's a lot of trust that gets put into first a DSO. You've got a clinical visionary who brings a DSO and says, yes, I trust you to help me reach my goals and get where I want to go. And so the first pitfall of a bad vendor relationship is actually that broken trust between the clinical leader and the leadership team that they've trusted to help them reach their goals. Broken trust is hard to overcome. And so that vendor selection is so critical. Of course, you then you lose money, you lose time, you lose efficiencies. You actually may break things that require a ton of effort to come in and fix. Um, but I would say the biggest casualty of a bad vendor relationship is broken trust across the board. Yeah, that, I think that's spot on. And even as an agency owner, I don't like to call, I don't love the word vendor as much as I love partnership. It's so important that these relationships align before you get into the relationship that you find the right groups to work with so you have the most success um so steven something that i would love to hear from your end as, as as a software provider um what are you looking for in terms of dso's that tend to be the best fit that that stay with you guys the longest that have the most success yeah i think that you're you're spot on with the with the whole word partnership and that word gets thrown around a lot, uh, but it is so important that DSOs and vendors um, think about the relationship as not a one-off, that it's a long nurturing relationship where business ideals and business uh, challenges um, and uh, uh, initiatives, whether they're short-term or long-term, they can be both, you know, and that's very important that those that alignment's there. Um, uh, so partnership is the is center to that thinking about the long term vision, um, and that's when the, the vendor selection. I would imagine that that executives and and Amber, you know, you have to really kind of know what you're getting into because that commitment is it has to be there to begin with. So I think that when I'm when I'm looking at a new customer and when I'm looking at a new DSO coming into my portfolio or my team's portfolio, I'm looking at gosh, do we have the stakeholders buy-in? Do they know what they're getting? That's not just an executive stakeholder. That's at the office level, at the uh, at the uh, administrative level in the corporate. Um, are they willing to roll up their sleeves and dive into uh, to understand the outcomes that can be delivered? Um, is there a desire to understand our product and make sure there's alignment there? Um, because if you have an executive that signs the contract and then walks away, that's a that's not a good sign. You have to have that engagement, um, and there has to be that understanding of the product. It doesn't mean they have to be in the product every day, um, but that's kind of a key thing. And I love a customer that's also an over communicator. Um, I think that's key to success. Um, I always joke that. We can fix problems if we know about them. We can achieve goals if we know about them. Setting those benchmarks, setting that governance, um, and uh, creating a sense of urgency. If we have those functions in a partnership, in a relationship, we'll find success, even if there's bumps in the road and hurdles. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that you you use this concept of engagement. Um, I use the word hero whenever we jump in, join into a new partnership. Like, who's the hero on the other side? These things are so robust and such a heavy undertaking, especially at large organizations like it was at CDP where they have a large number of dental practices and stakeholders involved in that project. And if there's not kind of like engagement and commitment from both sides, it can it's going to be difficult. <laughs> um, and what you actually want is a group of people dedicated to doing difficult things because the outcome of doing tackling difficult things is like great things. Um, so I love I, lo I love that that point. Um, one question I had for you, Stephen, you know, I think what I think is really interesting about Next Health, um, even when I go to conferences and I see Next Health, is they're they're like the the technical leader and, and the most advanced solution when it comes to a lot of these um online scheduling and 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 patient management and patient data. And the challenge can often be that the DSO space and just the healthcare space in general is not always the most technically advanced 
industry. Um, so what do you do to, to drive success when you're bringing a high tech solution into a lower tech space? And how do, they, how do you help you know, onboard these types of solutions and implement them across all these dental practices and all these things that are involved bringing high tech into a, a non high tech industry? Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because, uh, you know, we we see often that that technology, the, you know, all sorts of businesses, the technology is sometimes behind um, that. I think that's the foundation of our company and why we've been so successful from a technology perspective is because we are not dependent upon other people's technologies. You know, so we're able to work around those things, the synchronizer, the the products, the core products and functions of our tool do not. Uh, uh, really require that if, if someone's behind um, in the technology and their technology stacks not up to not up to snuff, we can figure that out and work around that. And and uh, that's kind of the you know we hear a lot over here at Next Health that we're not a we're not an online just an online booking company or a digital form company. Where our core business is syncing, it's integrating with with tools that are not ours. That are in very in different various different degrees of of, of abilities, um, and that's really been our success and why we've grown so fast. Um, uh, our engineering team. Um, I think that that there's another component that sometimes when you get into a DSO and the technology, sometimes the 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 the, the it's low hanging fruit to really be able to come in because a lot of times low hanging fruit is really about reporting. It's really about analytics. It's really about okay. The system does S, Y, and Z, but they can't. But they have no visibility into why. It's what 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 benchmarks they set. Okay, they don't even have benchmarks because they can't have any visibility. So I think from an impact right from the start, um, even if the technology is behind, that integration is is key. And having being able to get that data and and analyze that data, set benchmarks, and show progress on the ROI. Um, I think is really a key component to sort of guiding a company that's a little bit behind on the technology level um, and it being able to show them those, 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 those analytics so that they can make decision business based decisions or data based yeah. decisions. Yeah, yeah, I can, uh, I can tell you've worked with Amber in the past cause you're uh, definitely speaking her, her, her language. <laughs> yes. Here. <laughs> uh, yes. Amber from I your end, how, um, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying, yeah, Stephen and I have been around. We've been together for a long time and he is talking exactly the right talk of like one of the most important things to me. And I know one of the things we wanted to talk about today, Daniel, is like, okay, how did, how did I end up choosing Next Health and how did I choose OM, right? And that exact conversation that Stephen just had is a lot of, of what brought both partnerships to be. It's like the ability to get data to help me see what we were doing to measure and track and project manage and measure the things that mattered to me, right? Not just like little busy work inside your own systems, right? Where I didn't need partners that wanted me to get excited about their data. I needed partners that were excited about getting my data, get the results that I needed to measure. I cared about patients in the door, cared about patients scheduled, how many of them scheduled online, where did they come from, those types of things. And so the, the power of exactly what Stephen was just talking about of every step along the way, even if we couldn't get to Nirvana, as we talk about it now, Daniel, we use that word sometimes because we built Nirvana uh, uh, data um, with these two groups together. But even in the early days, it was just give me something to help me understand what's happening right now and where we are and give me some analytics to measure. And then let's measure progress. And what is that going to look like? And let's set some goals and some targets and kind of project manage through that. So, yeah, everything Stephen said is definitely an indication that uh, we were aligned from the start on uh, on what our needs were, which is super true. I had an old boss who used to call it the moonshot. We got we're going to get to the moon, but it's not about the moon. It's about the journey um, and and figuring out where. Where are we now? What do we need to do to take the steps to get to that moon? I like that a lot. I might uh, I might have to steal that one. Um, and to uh, kind of like plug myself in, I think part of that journey when it came to Next Health and, and, and CDP relationship was being the 
other vendor that is technology focused to help a lot of this implementation. Um, and we were able to come in and support CDP on the analytics side, on the tracking side, on everything that we want to be able to track through Next Health to then empower our data and decision making for patient acquisition. Um, so we were a big asset in that in that kind of like our piece of the Next Health implementation. And a question for you, Stephen, is that common where these DSOs or healthcare groups are leveraging agencies that maybe have a little bit more technical forward approach and, and help implement these technologies? Yeah, it's it's not only common, it's critical. You know, it's it's and I would say it's, you know, more and more critical as technologies have changed. And uh, it's even more critical because of that. Um, the uh, uh, it, it's so it's so important for an agency to realize, well, you're not going to get all things with all teams and you need to be able to focus on the uh, on on meeting your patients where they are and being able to focus on that. Um, and sometimes, whether it be data, whether it be analytics, whether it be GTM, uh, Google Tag Manager, whatever the, 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 some of these technologies are outside of, of what traditional marketing used to be. And it's really, really important that you leverage those expertise, that expertise. Um, and partners are a cru crucial Oh my gosh, I, I can't emphasize enough how important it is. <laughs> it can be the success or failure um, because, because uh, you know, our platform does what our platform does. We want to understand what the client does. But if there's a gap between those, uh, sometimes you need that support. Uh, an organization needs a support. Amber, the Ambers of the world need the support and so too their teams. Yeah, I think that's that's spot on and talking about the the need for that understanding of all that is too many people look at a tool like DSO and think online scheduling, right? When you, when it's really like, every, there's so much, that's just, a, that's just what the individual sees in the front end. There's, you know, patient management platform integrations, there's automation, there's analytics, there's every, all your Google ads budget and Facebook ads budget and how that's all tracked and all these deep, deep things that go beyond just online scheduling. Um, and I think the right partners that focus on those pieces of it help the whole entire product come together to be to extract as much value out of it. Yeah, yeah. Marketing used to be pretty postcards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it is way more than that. And man, you need you need support. You you need an organization that has uh, the ability to to scale and to, to bring more technology to the to the table. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Um, Amber, you kind of touched on this. Um, but to kind of bring the whole vendor selection full circle, talk to me about how you, at when you were at CDP, selected OM and Next Health, and what were some of the key things that drove those decisions? Yeah, our partnership with Next Health actually came first, and it was very quick that I had a texting vendor, I had a two-way texting vendor, um, and I knew very quickly we needed direct online scheduling and Next Health came and offered that exact solution. So a lot of my vendor selection came first with, am I really clear on exactly what I want as a leader? I didn't go shopping and just walk through the mall of possibility without a list of like, these are the problems I'm trying to solve and these are the exact solutions I need. And so I would say that was step number one was being really clear on what problem I was trying to solve and what my ask was. My ask at the time was I needed direct online scheduling that was able to write directly into our open dental boards. That was critical. I didn't want a form to be filled out that then somebody could call you and you thought you direct online scheduled, but you didn't. Um, and so they had to be able to do that and meet all the other requirements that we already had with a vendor um, in our two-way texting. And, and NevSelf came in and demonstrated that they could do exactly that. Um, and then again, OM came and did the same thing. My, my selection with OM was a little bit trickier because I really had very limited knowledge in the digital marketing space. And so I not only needed a partner that would come and do what they said they were going to do, but helped me understand what they were going to do and helped me build a team around the capabilities because it was pretty new to CDP. My marketing background was very much on the ground, face to face. We did a lot of Medicaid families. And so it was very much trust built out in the community. COVID came and all of a sudden, 
We went from, I can help you design a pretty website to, ooh, that website needs to be functional and drive patients. And I needed digital marketing and I was out of my scope. And so I needed a partner that wasn't going to hide behind big words that they just knew I didn't understand, but just give me your money because you're it's marketing and we're just going to do it and trust us to like, no, we're going to build this with you. We're going to talk the talk with you. We care about the results you care about. We'll measure to the results that you care about. And we will collaborate with your other partners that are already part of your ecosystem, like Next Health, like our phone systems vendor. Like I needed a true partner and OM came in and genuinely knocked it out of the park every single with every single step of the journey. And so it's been a, a great partnership all the way around. Nice, nice. I love that. I love that. And I was I was personally pretty involved in that project. Early on, so I remember, you know, we had a heavy focus as we do here on on analytics and, and and understanding our patient acquisition. So, I think within the first thirty days of working with you guys, I was already on calls with the Next Health product team, understanding their Google Tag Manager integration. How do we segment people that have insurance versus the ones that don't, and like really get to the the deep um, like implementation of what we needed to accomplish. So I, uh, I'm I'm glad that that was your experience because that's what we. Uh, that's definitely what we shoot for, and I'm sure Nexel does the same. I love it. I love it. <laughs> cool. So I know we're digging a bit into direct online scheduling and, 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 and patient booking. So let's go ahead and shift the conversation into that direction. Um, something that's really important to me as, as someone that obviously focuses on digital marketing, but also trying to align with today's changing consumer expectations. Um, and then organizations like Next Health with, they've built the platforms to make that happen. And then other groups like CDP that are fully committed to making sure that they have those capabilities so they can provide the best customer experience possible. Um, so Steven, um, to really kick it off with you, so I'm sure you have some thoughts here. Um, talk to me a little bit about kind of the changing and or like the digital transformation going on in, in, in healthcare and, and, and online scheduling? Um, uh, when I first heard the word digital transformation, it's probably about, about eight years ago. And I thought, what the heck is that? <laughs> digital transformation. But man, have we been full speed ahead. And man, is that it's almost like, I, I can't believe the amount of changes um, that have come about because of a digital transformation and digital transformation for me. Um, and I'm focused on my customers like the DSOs, but I, I have to be focused on the patient. If I'm, if I'm going to support my customers, their customers, the patient is the end game for me. So commitment to that patient and, and the digital transformation for them, it's sometimes it's dragging them, pulling them. Uh, but, but I think the DSOs are really moving in the right direction to, to accomplish one, the efficiency that, that digitizing your patient experience provides. Um, but more than important than the efficiency is the experience that the patient uh, now has because you've digitized your, your patient experience. Um, and I'm not just talking about online booking, that's meeting them where they are in, in as they're sitting in their, in their robe at two o'clock in the morning, uh, booking an appointment online. That's one thing, but also digital forms, um, two-way texting, the communication piece, the reminder piece, those are all kind of uh, key components to that digital transformation. And um, patients don't even realize they're happening. Uh, it's happening a lot of times. Um, it's just the convenience. It's like, oh, I haven't looked at my email in three days or five days because I, I don't check my personal email except once a week. But I get a text from the, the, my doctor saying, hey, I have an appointment tomorrow. Oh no, I forgot, let me show up. So retention rates and, 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 and no-show rates are all driven by that, that digital experience. Um, and um, you know, even I, I, patients show up in the waiting room and instead of being given a tablet and or a little clipboard and a pen where they scribble down their their information, they could be sent a digital reminder 
Um, and that reminder turns into a beautiful form that they can click and fill out on their phone or be handed a tablet in the office in some instances. Okay. So, so patient, the expectation, especially with the younger generation, um, the expectation is there. I will not book an appointment um, unless I can not pick up the phone and I can just text them and say, I need an appointment or find their link online and book an appointment there. Um, we're speaking to, we have to be speaking to that younger generation because that's the future. Um, and the older generation, boy, they're getting into it as well because they see that the, it's getting more convenient and easier. So, so yeah, digital transformation, um, it's here. It's, it's, it's way, uh, you know, it's, it's a way uh, we're already in the future. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's just getting better and better. Yeah. Nice. I love, I love that you brought up, um, uh, no show rates and, there's, I mean, it's it's even trying to quantify all the areas that this the, the digital transformation can improve in, in healthcare. It's 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 really amazing. Um, so Amber, and I'll give you some York statistics real quick. I'll give you just one little statistic that um, about sixty to seventy percent of online bookings that are happening are happening after hours. So they're happening when the patient's not at in front of their. And you know this. How do you book an appointment, right? Um, it's usually not during the day. You're not calling the office. It's late at night or uh, in the morning while you're driving to work in your car. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so those things are really dramatically improving uh, the patient experience and inconvenience. Nice. Amber, uh, from the DSO side, um, were you guys able to like quantify and see significant changes as you like updated your experiences to have direct online scheduling and, and digital patient intake and all these things? We did. In fact, we talked a lot about how, you know, regardless, again, we, we had a primarily Medicaid patient base early on. And what we found with the technology expectations that it, it is, it, it, it goes outside of income at this point, like it is so available to everybody. This the experience of expectation from like an Instacart to Amazon to uh, ordering Chick-fil-A, right? Like the expectation from the patient goes across all demographics. And so at this point, it's not even like a cool an added bonus that we have these features. It's an expectation. It's a requirement. It's a, it's a no play zone. If you don't have it, you're just completely out of, of the market. They're not going to even talk to you, right? If you don't have these bare minimum requirements. And so we quickly, you know, learned and pivoted and um, our, our favorite word post COVID and, and added some of these features and our recare rates, our retention rates went up, right? The, the no show rates went down. The one of the biggest changes that we saw, which was is a business side, but I needed less call center agents. I was over the call center. Well, I could trim my call center team because nobody wanted to talk anyway. We we're making all these outbound calls. We went from about an 80 to 90% outbound team to a much smaller 80% inbound team because texting was able to do so much of the communication and direct online booking. I mean, I was just talking to one of the team members the other day, and I think a minimum of 25% of their um, new patient bookings are direct online, right? So just the massive shift of increase of efficiencies um, we needed the, pe the smart people that were there and are talented, we could put in better positions and eliminate some of this busy work and um, all the mundane phone calling and things like that with the influx of technology. And we can answer people and answer questions quickly for them and respond quickly. Um, so yeah, it's been a game changer for sure. I love that. I love that. I'm always pretty shocked, especially when speaking to smaller groups, how so many of them have not implemented a lot of these technologies and, and typically you know they have amazing doctors they have so much legacy business that's so strong and they provide such a good experience for their customers but they i think they tend to ignore that you net new customer is still something that's needed and to to steven's point a lot of today's customers are just expecting those things so if you want them to actually see what an amazing doctor you have and what an amazing practice you have you have to open up those doors to give that exposure to more people um, and, and I tend to believe the, a lot of those doors are closed and they need to be open for a lot of these smaller groups looking to continue to grow. It's a no-fly zone for sure. I mean, at this point, again, it's just like 
they're not even going to consider us. It's not a cool, I'm techie and forward thinking. If I have direct online scheduling, it's a baseline. And so I couldn't agree more. I, I just, I could not agree more. You think about, um, about 40 to 50% of online booking that we see here at Next Health, at least in my customer portfolio, are new patients. And, and where does a new patient find a new dentist? Um, they're Googling it. And then the next step is once they find them, uh, they're going uh, to their website or they're trying to book them right there from Google. And if that's not there, they're going to the next one. Um, they're going to the next one on the list. And so you are, it is a bare minimum. You need to have this um, uh, available to your patients and you'll see an acquisition uh, improvement for your, for new patients. Yeah. I mean, earlier today we were auditing some, some Google ads for one of our partners and I kept seeing ZocDoc pull up as some of the results, right? And at some point we have to provide the same type of experience that these technology companies are, or eventually they're going to eat us up. And I think what, what we're empowering with, with organizations like Next Health is even the mom and pop doctor can provide that type of world-class experience. Um, and I think that's really, really important. Cool. Um, I know we're nearing on time, so I just want to um, pass it around if you have any final thoughts. And then I'd love if each of you kind of told the audience and how they can find you or contact you in the future or find you on LinkedIn. Um, and we'll go ahead and go with you first, Stephen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Stephen Mandala, uh, LinkedIn. I'd uh, love to connect with people. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. And uh, thanks so much for being here, Stephen. This is great. Yeah, My pleasure. My pleasure. And Amber, yourself? Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for coming, Stephen. We, I just, I'm always thrilled when I can share the room with these, you know, both these two partners and the amazing impact that they had on me as a leader at, at CDP. And I'm, I'm excited to now be partnered with OM to help bring some of that um, um, value. And again, we talk a lot about the value of, of other industry partners and we share referrals and all those things. So I'm excited about that. I'm hanging out on LinkedIn all the time at Amber Nish. Um, so come find me there or, um, you know, check us out at, at our website, uh, Growth OM, and just come and see how we can, we can help you with your digital marketing needs and have some fun along the way. Thanks for having us. I love it. I love it. Can't wait to continue working with you guys. And as always, Make sure you follow the conversion stack. We're on Spotify, YouTube, um, iTunes, you name it, we'll be there. And uh, until next time, thanks guys.